Bonjour, bienvenue à 9.1 relative pronouns qui and que. So remember that pronouns replace the name of a noun so that you don't have to keep saying it over and over again. Now these are relative pronouns, which means they're linking to related ideas. And we'll look a little bit more into that. So we have qui and que. And you'll see this in English for the words like which or that. Now the only difference between qui and que is not which you might want to say who or what. It's not that. It's whether it's used as the subject in a sentence or whether it's used as a direct object, okay? So that's what we're going to divide it into. Subject or direct object. So as long as you can figure out if you are replacing a subject in a sentence or the direct object in a sentence, then it's really easy to tell if you should use ki and ku. And there's a big trick to this. I'm just going to skip to the end. This is a spoiler here. A subject is followed by the verb right afterwards. Direct object, okay, is not followed by the verb right afterwards. It's followed by usually another subject and then a verb. So let's look at the first instance, the subject. We're going to take two different sentences and put them together because we're linking those related ideas and you will see what I mean. Jem le film. Okay, I like the movie. The movie s'appelle Thor. Okay? So you can tell here that the film is the thing that is related in the two sentences. Okay, this is our related idea. And we are expanding, expanding um, about the film. We're giving more information, okay? So um, we're going to put them together so that this becomes a clause. It becomes a part of the first sentence and it's elaborating okay, on this idea that we've already talked about. Oh, the film is the subject because a verb is right after. Look, verb. So, take that out, replace it with qui, because that's what pronouns do. J'aime le film qui s'appelle Thor. I like the film that, or which, is called Thor. Okay. Now, if we were talking about a person, um, we would translate it as who, but it still is qui. So key is followed by a verb. That's all we do. We have two different ideas, or uh, two different sentences. They have a similar theme here. We're talking about that, um, that related idea of the movie, and we're just linking them together, the related relative pronoun. All right, let's move on to our direct object, okay? So direct object, if you remember, okay, it's the thing that is receiving the action, directly receiving the action of the verb. So, let's use our same example here. I'm just going to divide, make a dividing line. Okay. We'll keep it, j'aime le film. And then, we'll say, j'ai vu le film hier. So again, okay, we have Two related ideas, the movie, the movie here. But in this sentence, the film is not the one that's doing the action, it is receiving the action, it is the thing that was seen, it is our direct object. So what do we do? Well now we got to link them. So j'aime le film. Remember, think about this in English. What would you say here? I like the movie, I saw the movie yesterday. You would say, I like the movie, that, I saw yesterday. So it's the same in French. J'aime le film. I'll just write it down here. Que j'ai vu hier. So que ends up going before this whole phrase here, but it, that, it makes sense because that's what we say in English. 
Again, we don't say, I like the film. I saw the film yesterday. We say, I like the film that I saw yesterday. That's it. It's, it's really not too tricky of a concept. You just have to be able to tell what is um, the part of speech of the thing that you're talking about, the, the thing that you're replacing. So the fium here comes before a verb. So look, que, j'ai vu. So we already have a subject. It can't be a subject here. You, it's a direct object. You already have the subject, which is j'ai vu. I saw. Um, that's it. Now, now, there are a couple little things here. If you put it in the passé composé, some weird stuff starts to happen. Okay, so if we, so for instance, let's take this example here with que. Let's say, um, j'aime la pizza. I like the pizza. And we'll say uh, that I ate yesterday. Okay, I like the pizza that I ate yesterday. Like, oh, let's let's go there again. I I really. I like the type of pizza that I ate yesterday. J'aime la pizza, right? Que j'ai mangé, it's a direct object. I ate it. Oops, whoa, what's going on? Que j'ai mangé hier. Okay, when que comes before the passé composé here, if you think about it, we already should know what happens because we talked about this in a previous chapter when our, when a pronoun, remember, a direct object pronoun, and this is direct object, remember the direct object pronoun when it came before our verb, what did we have to do? We had to treat this almost like it was an adjective because this is a direct object going before the verb. Now, what does it represent? It represents la pizza. So we have to add an extra E. Okay, sorry guys, I know that's kind of tricky. Um, one other thing, and this should be a little bit more obvious, if we have qui in it, okay, so that was with avoir, let's go back to uh, qui. I opened the gifts, okay, I opened j'ouvre, I open the gifts. Okay, which, okay, again we have the key. Arrive. Now do you remember? Arrive takes at the key. Sont arrivé. Yeah. Now this. This took an S. Qui is the thing that was arrived, and it's talking about, qui is representing, okay, it's the pronoun, it's replacing cadeau, so you don't have to repeat cadeau again. Instead of saying, j'ai ouvert les cadeaux, les cadeaux sont arrivés hier, remember? I opened the gifts, the gifts arrived yesterday, we replaced the gifts with qui, but it doesn't mean you, you get to skip um, making the accord with this verb with uh, the subject. You still have to do that. So basically, this is still the same. It's just a reminder, don't forget to do it. With avoir, that's like what we learned before with our direct object pronouns that go before the verb. Okay?